Good morning, guys. Okay. I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a fun one. Um, the first thing I'm going to warn you, though, is that I have done a lot of um, swap outs. So I will show you how I created them. But at certain points, I'm going to swap out pieces because I need to let them dry. Good morning, Glenda. Um, so I'm going to tell you what inspired this project. So on the Close to My Heart um, blog the other day, they showed a rainbow card using um, our inks. And so that's what kind of inspired this little, um, these two cards. So I'm gonna create both of them. And so because Valentine's Day is coming up, I created this one. And then I wanted to make it so that you could use it anytime, not just at Valentine's Day. So I did this one. So I'm just going to set those aside, but this is what we're going to make today. So I think they are super cute. So this is for your cat loving people. And then this is, of course, for your dog lovers. So we are going to make these. They are so cute, and they're even cuter in person. It's kind of um, a shame because they are way cuter in person. But I'm just going to set them up here so they're still kind of in my frame. So the first thing I'm going to suggest is... I have grabbed my all-purpose mat, and that's because we're going to have some fun with inks this morning. So as you can see, I just have some dry um, glue on here, but the awesome part of this mat is that everything seems to come off. So I'm just going to put this down on my surface, and I'm going to explain to you why I have a few swap outs, and I'll show you what happened. So first of all, I think we will do, I'm going to do both the backgrounds really quickly and then we'll move on to making the cards. So basically I wanted to have colored cards. So I've just cut them out of cardstock. So I have a top folding um, black card for the dog card and a uh, top folding craft card for the cat card. So those two things I've done ahead of time. And then I have a piece of scrap cardstock. This is just white daisy cardstock. And it is, I cut it to the size of the full size of the card base because I want to be able to trim it off. So I use the, um, stitch thin cut rectangles to trim it off. But so this technique is super simple and can be adapted to any color scheme or um, anything like that. So first, maybe we'll do the cat one first. So because it was Valentine's Day themed, I have grabbed three pinks purples. So I got a lot of stuff all around me, so I'm, you might hear stuff crashing. Like I said, I tried to do a lot of it beforehand so that you didn't have to watch me do everything. But, okay. So the three pinks that I used, well, pink and purple. So um, first I had grabbed out, I had raspberry and pixie, and then I had ballerina but I didn't like the ballerina because it was way too light. So in the end, I went with pixie, sugar plum, and raspberry. And so what I did was I've done the raspberry across the bottom, sugar plum in the middle, and then pixie on top. So we're gonna do that. So um, the most economical way to do it is with your um, a round sponge. And you can get so many out of 
so many wedges out of a giant sponge. So they cut up just with your scissors and you just want to cut it into pieces. And so I just have a piece that fits into my fingers, but I'm going to show you with the other ones what I did to them after. So first thing I'm going to do raspberry because I'm going to start with my darkest color. I don't know. It's just a preference for me for some reason. So when I'm finished with it and I know I'm going to use them again, I'll just staple a little scrap piece of cardstock onto it and I actually wrote the name and then they basically they just sit in a big bucket beside my desk and um, then I can reuse them until you can't use them anymore. So I'm just going to move, I'm going to try not to touch too many things because this is, I'm going to end up with everything all over the place. But so super easy. You just take your sponge, grab some ink onto it. And then with a super dark, with my darkest color, I'm just going to kind of rub it off my mat on the, on the mat a little bit before I put it onto my paper. And that's just, I want to take a little bit of the color off so that I know what it's going to look like before I put it down onto my cardstock. So this is the raspberry. And you could just build up the color as much or as little as you want and whatever color scheme you wanted. You could go online. There's tons of color combinations and um, they're lots of fun. So I knew that I wanted to um, have my cat sapphire, saffron, not sapphire, sapphire is blue. So I um, knew that this was where I wanted to start. So then I have Pixie here. I'm just gonna set that one aside. So again, same thing. I'm just gonna rub it a little bit on the other side. Okay, and I'm going to explain to you why I have swap outs because when this is done, we're going to drop the spritz stamp cleaner on it and it's going to take away spots from the background to make it look more distressed. And then um, I actually ended up um, adding lots of layers on top of it. So but I wanted them on top of the distress part. So you kind of have to let the spritz dry or it's going to run the rest of the stuff you're doing on the card. Okay. And then here is sugar plum. And I just want to kind of run that in the middle. And I kind of just thought that it kind of brought the, the other colors together. Okay. I don't know. Like it's way, it's got way more color on it than it looks like on camera. Because it almost still looks white to you guys, but it's actually quite pink. I'm going to hold it up and maybe that'll. Okay. So that is what I'm going to stop with. So I'm going to hold it up. There's actually, and it's still, you can't really see it as well as it, but there's actually quite a bit of color on here. So I'm just going to set this stuff aside for a second. Okay. So then you just want to grab your spritz cleaner and I did a few different things. So first I'm going to open it up because I want a few um, big drops on here where it's going to take a lot of the color back off. So I'm just going to do a few. Now remember, I already know that I'm going to trim off the edge of this too. So I'm not going right to the edge with it. So I want a few 
big ones first. And then you can use, so I have, there's extra cleaner on here and you can just flick it onto your page too, your paper. Okay, so, and you can also spray it. So there's three different kind of levels of um, pulling away of ink that you'll get doing that. So I'm gonna hold it up. So you can see I've got some big ones and it's taking the color away right away. And then some medium ones and that's from flicking it. And then there's just light splatter in the background too. I'm just going to let this dry for a few minutes and I'm just going to quickly play, show you the rainbow one. I'm just going to flip my mat around. So, the other one was the dog. I did exactly the same colors that were on the blog. So, it was, you can see here, so I have candy apple and then raspberry and then nectarine and lemon and willow and bluebird and then pansy. And you can see here, like lots of my pansy got cut off because of course I ran it farther than my card face. So we're just going to quickly do that one. So in this case, you'll see more of um, my little sponges. Okay, so like I said, I've just grabbed little, like some of these are super tiny pieces because I just had them lying around and I won't, no, I won't necessarily always distress with that kind of color. So I'm going to start with candy apple. So I'm just setting them in a stack. Maybe I'll leave them like this so you guys can see them. So I'm going to grab my candy apple sponge. And there we go. Okay, same thing for this one. I'm going to rub it because it's my darkest color. I'm going to just rub it off on the edges first. And you just want to rub it as much as you, you can also see too here, I've like, um, you can just, if you get ink on the lid too, you can just rub it, your sponge in there. Okay, so I just want a little bit of the candy apple. That's my darkest color. So that one's done. Now I'm going to go with the raspberry. Okay, so this one is a little bit different because we're not doing three colors. I'm kind of building it up as I go. So here's just kind of my next stripe. And you just decide how much you want of that. Now this one I'm going to leave out for a second in case I need to go back with it. Then I have my nectarine, oh, that's lemon, nectarine. So on the card that they did on the um, company blog, they kind of did it so that it was super dark on one side and then went lighter to the other. I wanted it more like a solid rainbow across and I'm just kind of rubbing in a little bit to my previous color also. So I'm rubbing back into my pink there and I've decided I don't need any more raspberry. So I'll close that one up. And then I'll leave this open for a second and I'll do my lemon. So now you see why I've also done parts ahead because this is going to end up being longer. So I've got some swap outs that as soon as I finish this, I'll show you. So there's the lemon. And then I'll just rub in a little bit of willow. 
So this one, I have lots of ink in the lid here. So you can see, I can just grab that. So this is going to start to get darker again. So Okay. And then Bluebird. Doesn't want to stand up on its own now. Ooh. See, I knew I was going to do that. Okay, Bluebird. There's so many possibilities for this. You could turn this into a scrapbooking page or um, part of a scrap, like uh, make your own paper to match something for a scrapbooking page. Okay, there's the Bluebird. And guys, this isn't going to be the best because I'm kind of trying to speed through it just so you can actually see the whole process. And then Pansy. So again, this will be the darkest one. Okay, and then with this one, I would do the same thing with my spritz cleaner at this point, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to have to let it dry. So I'm just going to move these out of the way. Okay, so now I'm going to bring back in the pinks because what I wanted to show you is, so in the background, I stamped little paw prints kind of in the colors that I also used. And then there's also gold shimmer brush here that I flicked onto the page. So we're going to do that with this one. Same thing. I wanted the paw prints to be super subtle. I don't know that you're actually going to be able to see these ones. So I used for these ones, second generation ink, and I really actually quite liked the way that turned out. So we're going to do that here. So you could see here in my swap out. So you could see the paw prints probably better here. Yes, and I think that the paw prints help play up the rainbow too on the back of the card. So this is my swap out. So you can see like here's a raspberry one, and this is probably first generation inking, and then there's second generation. So it's just a little bit lighter. There's just a little subtle nectarine paw print here, and I have a willow one there. So, and on here, you can actually see, but this one's all dry now. So you can see like, I've got big drops where I wanted lots of ink to fall away. So I have three different levels of drops, right? So the big ones, and then there's medium sized ones, this would be flipped. And then you're not going to be able to see it, but there's little tiny ones that are just the spray. And then I've gone back in with my gold shimmer brush. And I have big drops and medium sized drops and little drops. So we're going to do that now. So on this one, this is the one I just set aside. It's not completely dry yet. And I'm going to show you why I did a swap out because when I stamped this, my background wasn't perfectly dry, so my ink ran a little bit. So that's why I decided to do swap outs for today. So this is the cat one. So here I have the little paw print. And so I kind of, I know that I want the subtler colors on here. So I'm going to come back with the sugar plum and the pixie. And so I just have a little scrap piece of paper off to the side, and I'm just going to lightly stamp them. So this is the sugar plum, and I'll just do a few little paw prints. And if you want it even lighter, you could go third generation there. So it's just almost just like a shadow. And same thing I can do with the pixie. I thought that the rainbow one really suited the birthday card. That's why I went that route with that one. Okay, so here's the pixie. 
and I'll go down here into my dark area. And I'm just trying to avoid right now the spritz cleaner because I don't want, obviously, that to. So I'm just kind of making them almost walk across the page. Okay, so that's what I did next. I put the little paw prints on the page. And then I pulled out my gold shimmer brush. And again, same thing, the multi-purpose mat, because it's going to be easy to wipe off then when you're finished. So, of course, shake it up. I can't do it where you can see because it makes the camera jump. But, And then what I did is I have just... I normally just put like a little pile up here because that's what I'll use for my big drops. But I'm going to flick the gold onto here. So that's just going to create the little white ones and you can add as much or as little as you want. And I'm really just tapping it like, a, like you would tap a paintbrush. And then where I want bigger drops, I'm going to pick it up onto my brush and lay it down onto the paper. And you get bigger drops. Just like that. If you want like really big drops, you can do that too. It's just you have to remember to let it dry in the middle. Because obviously you don't want to be stamping on this right now. So you can see you can see you can even make a really big drop. So and I kind of try and do it so that it's going across the page. Okay, so that I think will be it. So I'm just going to show you. So I'm just going to set this one aside now. And it's just as easy as that to wipe off your mat at this point. So I'm just taking a baby wipe and you can see I probably have lots of extra stuff on here from before that I haven't cleaned off too. So I'm just setting this aside. So super, super easy to clean up. Okay, so now let's put some cards together. So maybe we'll do this one first. So all I've done now is I've taken that background that we just created and I cut it out with the largest rectangle from the new stitched rectangle frames because I wanted it to just fit just inside the um, card base. So you can see what I've done is the piece that I cut out that I was working on is exactly the same size as my frame. So when I went to run it through, I lay it, did it down. This is still not dry, so I'm not going to do that, but I just laid it down inside and then ran it through. And then it's perfect, the perfect size for the inside of my card. And to boot, you end up with two fun frames to use for something else. So here you can see this is like my rainbow frame. So this is the leftover from this piece that I did. And then this is the leftover from this pink piece that's like this. So you could use those on a different card. I put 
I've cut another rectangle for the inside, but you could use it on the inside of your card also, because now you can see the difference. If you were just doing a white card on the inside though, it would show the difference between the what you're doing there. So, these are dry and cut out. So we have those. So then, like I said, for the cat one, I wanted a craft base. So I have just cut a piece of craft paper and I've scored it in half. And my piece of paper is eight and a half by five and a half. And I scored it at four and a quarter to just to make a top folding card because of course my card sentiment runs this way. So I wanted it like that. And then I have cut out the stitch rectangle for the inside and I'm just going to quickly stamp the little paw print and we'll attach that to the inside. So I'm going to do a little raspberry paw. And this is perfect for, you could add a sentiment from the heart happy stamp set on the inside here too, just mine is across the room, so I'm not going to do that. So there we go, my little paw prints on the bottom. And so, these are the stamp sets that I played with today. So, the cat one is called Perfect, and it's seven, C1769. And this is the cat that I'm going to use. And then I also use the sentiment right here that says, you are perfect. And the little paw print. That's what I just stamped on the inside. And then for the dog card, I use paw prints on my heart, which is C1770. And we're going to stamp this bigger heart on the inside. And then I stamp this little dog for the eye. And then his little paw print too. That's what I used to run across the page. And then I thought for the wish card on the inside, you could use a sentiment from the dandelion wishes, which is B1653. You could say birthday wishes on the inside or make a wish. You could also put the make a right here. Or you could use um, a birthday in watercolor and there's a great sentiment right here happy birthday for the inside of the card that could go just right across here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stamp my cat and i'm going to use intense black for both of them because i have used um the shin hand markers to color them so for the cat, I just have a piece of saffron cardstock and I'm going to use the lighter side and stamp them. And then I'm just going to set him aside to dry for a second. But I've colored his nose, just the little dot on his nose. And I just used Tender Pink, which is one of our Shin Han colors. And so I've just colored his nose, just with a little dot. And then I've cut out a little heart. This is the smallest heart and raspberry from the Stitched Heart Thin Cut. And then I've cut out the letters ahead of time. So I cut out a Front with using the um, block letter thin cut, a black set, which you're not going to see on the black. And then I've cut out gold um, glitter paper to the same letter. And I'm going to pop the letters up with just a little piece of um, foam tape. And I did, because I just wanted that little shadow. So I did this beforehand too, so you wouldn't have to watch that part. So, now we're going to assemble this. So I'm going to add my inside part. Just 
looks like so and see it the with the thin cut stitch rectangle rectangles it fits perfectly and I love just the little detail of the stitching around the outside okay and then I have my background and I'm going to kind of figure out where I want this because I still have to add my your perfect on the bottom here. So I think I want it to be just right here, just above this little paw print. So this time my background is nice and dry, so I don't have to worry about it running. Pink out of the way. Okay, and I'm going to leave enough room because I want my twine in the middle. And I'm just going to kind of decide how I want my letters. So I'm going to add my little hat in here first. So like I said, you could use this technique for so many different things and there's so many color combinations you could use for it. So I want him about there. So now I'm just going to add my shadow letters and then when I go to add my glitter, I'm just going to kind of slightly offset them so you still see my black underneath. So then just slightly offsetting them. hard because I'm not actually right above my part to tell if I'm straight or not. Pause. Hopefully that'll be close. I thought these turned out so cute. Some days I play before and then some days I wing it. Sometimes I'll just switch it up too, but you could totally use these in so many different ways. I thought this nice big cat looked so much like an O. It was perfect. There we go. So now you can see there's like dimension it's and it just kind of looks like a little bit like a shadow and then I'm just going to take my white and gold twine to tie into the gold letters I'm just going to wrap it around a few times and then I know you guys have seen me do this a hundred times but I find it way easier to tie it on the side. I'm not really sure why, but I'll tie it on the side normally and then swing it around to where I want it on the card. There you go. Now you can make cards on Saturday. I will have these as my crop this weekend. So I don't know why I find that easiest, but I do.
And I'm going to pop this up on foam tape. Oh, and it got loose. There we go. And if you want the little pieces of twine separated, I'm just going to use my piercing tool. Oh, and I have to put this card on. So again, I just have a little foam dot. So I wanted his heart popped up. And then I'm going to use thin foam tape. attach it to my card front. Just to help the twine, um, to give the card room, have the twine on there. So then I'm going to show you a little trick about centering this piece then on your card front because the full rectangle, if you cut it out, leaves a border. And then I'm going to use that. Perfect. Good enough. So when you, like the little edging that I showed you before, I'm going to, so I have one that I've just, this is just a piece of espresso. It's from a different um, card. So this is going to be super hard for me to get over top of, but I'm just going to lightly tack it down to my mat with washi. And then I know exactly where the middle of the card front is. Because you, I don't want it like slightly off center. Hopefully this will still work, even though I'm not right over top. It's kind of almost at just at a weird kind of angle to get over top of. My desk that I have here is quite high, so it's, I'm not very tall, so it's very hard for me to get over top of with my camera right in my way. Okay, so then see, I'm just gonna place it down and I know that I'm centered. And then I'm just gonna peel that up. And I wouldn't push super hard on it until I knew that I was actually then centered. So there's that one. So there's that one. And like I said, super easy to then add the sentiment to inside. Oh, we need some glitter gems. So I just have gold glitter gems. And I'll just add a few to the front. A couple different sizes. There we go. So that one is done. So like you can see here, I added a little bit darker color and more color for the little paw prints than the first one. But there's the two of those. And now let's put this one together. So for this one, I created a black top folding card. And again, I have the inside piece and we're just going to Stamp the, these little paw prints. So I have the little heart with the two paw prints in it, and I'm just going to stamp it. Actually, for this one, I'm going to add this up here because then I'll add a birthday sentiment in after. So there's that one. And then with this one, what I've done is I colored it in with my um, sugar plum shimmer brush. 
I don't want to do that just yet because it's not quite dry. So I'm going to set that aside and I'll insert it later once I stamp the sentiments onto it. So for this one, for this card front, it's basically exactly the same. So I have my card base and then my letters. And then I use the little dog. So this is the dog I use. And I'm going to show you just quickly how I colored him. I wanted him dry. So for him, I used the bronze, the clay, and then the colorless blender. So I just really quickly added very little, but a little bit of shadow down to his belly, under his chin, just on his ears. And then just into the base of his tail. So this is the bronze, the darker color. And like I said, just really, really little, and I didn't do any complex coloring. And then this one is the clay. And I just colored up from the dark areas and kind of just tried to blend them a little bit. And because I think he looks like my doodle, of course, when I'm coloring, I'm just kind of doing little circles to mimic his hair. And then you can actually see it more. Everybody knew when they saw this stamp set that I was going to have to get it to mimic Obi. I have a golden doodle who's like sound asleep right at the moment on his pillow behind me. He's not enjoying this cold weather snap that we're having. So he's all about the playtime and it's not so fun right now. He is not impressed in that we had snow a couple of times this week and so he had to wear his boots outside because his paws are full of hair and they get so um, when we when you get that wet snow they get so packed with snow that then he obsessively cleans his feet after his walk and it's always he typically goes out with my husband at night and then he's just constantly biting at his feet. Okay, so like I said, this was just, I just did some quick coloring and just kind of blended out my little shadows, but nothing super complex. And then if you want to highlight a few spots, you would just use your colorless blender on my guy here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I even gave him little eyebrows, just little highlights over his eyebrows where um, I pulled the colorless blender through there. So same thing for this one. You just kind of decide this word is a little bit bigger than the love because of the wide letters. So. You just I kind of decided where I wanted it and I'm just going to push my ruler down so that my title is actually straight on here so and the the puppy I have popped him up on foam tape so let's 
looks like I want him first. And then I'll add my letter here. And you don't actually need to do the shadow if you don't want either. It just kind of, I thought it just kind of added a little bit of a detail. Sorry, I need to have a sip of water here. My, uh, everybody is sick here. And it's so dry. And I am just, I think, hopefully getting better. So, but talking so much. I realized yesterday I did a, like an unboxing video of the Love Blossom special. And I realized at the end of the video that I was so out of breath just from talking. So, okay, and then for the same for this one. Let's see if this is enough twine. No. Yana, maybe you mean you want my Valentine's for your kids. Oh, that's funny. This piece is exactly the same as that other piece. I must have cut it for something and realized it was just slightly too short. So you could see when I unwind the twine that it was super um, kinked from being sitting on the roll. And just from the warmth of running my fingers over it, it flattens it out. So, there we go. Like I said, I'm glad I did a few parts of this ahead because look, we're already almost at the 50 minute mark. And you guys will not want to watch me do all the other parts. I'm pretty sure everybody has better stuff to do than watch me all day long. Okay, so now, same thing, the shimmer letters, I just have them on foam. Okay. I thought I lost my W. Never fear. Okay, how cute is that? Seriously, guys. So, there we go. Same thing. I'm just going to take my card front. I'm just going to add thin foam tape to the back and I'm using my non-stick scissors to cut the foam tape then you don't end up with tape stuck to everything Do 
you love foam paste, you have to have these stickers. If you like anything sticky, really, that you want to cut, they are amazing. Okay, same thing, just going to quickly pull off the back. I'm going to stop after I touch the front here because you guys will basically know how to do it then. But I really just kind of wanted to come on and show you the technique of how to make the background and then what I used it for. So, same thing. You can just add the frame like so. And then it just makes it easier to drop it in. Same thing, I wouldn't push it all the way down until I lift it up and look. Oh, see, that's what I get for talking while I'm doing something sometimes. So. this off. Okay. So, I love the little paw prints in the background, guys. Oh, you're very welcome, Glenda. So, there we go. We are finished. I'll add my sentiment in at, now after. But so here's the cat one from before with the inside. And then here's the one I did today. And I think you can kind of see there are the subtleties of what's underneath on just a little paw print. And like I said, this one would be great to add one of the sentiments from the Heart Happy um, snap set. And then here is the card I made before, the little heart on the inside, and then here's the one today. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.